For many of us, our closest interaction with wild animals is restricted to their fleeting glimpse. We only get close to them in a cage where these animals are held in captivity. Jammu and Kashmir has always been an explorer's paradise. As one crosses the Khardungla Pass, which is considered by many to be the highest road in the world, we experience a new dimension of life. These high mountain peaks and the rarefied atmosphere may appear devoid of any life, but the Nobra Valley of Ladakh is home to one of the most unique and rare animal. A Bactrian camel has just made its presence felt in its vast desert home. Bactrian or double humped camel has two humps instead of one. Originally found in the Gobi Desert of Mongolia, the Bactrian camel came to Nobra Valley of Ladakh from Yarkin almost 200 years ago. Initially, it was reared as a domestic animal for transport. But as the Silk Route lost its importance, the camel was left to fend for itself. And in the desert expanses of Nobra, it seems to be doing extremely well. And has since become an integral part of the rich wildlife here. The sights and sounds in Ladakh are exotic and these sounds transform a human being to a different world. A river tern is trying its luck to catch a fish in the mighty Indus. But a wild ass Okeang seems to be interested in something different. The Numa Valley, which forms a part of Changthang Plateau, is famous for more reasons than one. This fertile plateau is not only home to the most diverse forms of birds and mammals, but is known as the only place where the state bird of JNK, the black-necked crane, migrates and nests for a brief period during the summers. The black neck crane is a rare and threatened species of alpine crane. It migrates from the tablelands of Tibet and nests in the marshes and bogs of Hanli and Numa. As few as 15 to 30 birds migrate and nest in these peat mounds and produce a few young ones every year. It was thought earlier that very few black neck cranes exist in the world. But recent surveys suggest that a substantial population of these cranes exists in the Tibetan Plateau. Normally, one chick is born. The black necked crane has by all means become a special symbol of conservation and protection. 
The temperate forests of Kashmir are a fusion of million colors. A lone brown dipper is negotiating the torrents of the mighty Sindh. And somewhere close by, a female Hangul has sounded a word of caution for the others of its group. Hangul, the state animal of JNK, is still found in fairly large numbers in the Dashigam National Park. This is the season when females form large groups and the rutting or the breeding season has commenced. The winters have finally arrived with full intensity. And this is the time when finding food can be fairly tough. Winters are the time of adversity. During these months, the upper reaches of mountains become inaccessible and the Hangul have to compete hard to reach for any food that is available. Not only this, the survival also depends on caution and intelligence. This group of Hangul has very much sensed the presence of a leopard around. Leopard is a major predator which hunts the Hangul for food. The Hangul senses have cautioned it and the fact of survival indicates that it is time for the group to move to a safer area. Dashigam is perhaps the richest of all the forests of Kashmir. This is because of the presence of large number of fruit trees that happen to be a favorite with the Himalayan black bear, which, like other places of Kashmir, thrives very well in Dashigam. Very different from the brown bear, the black bear is omnivorous. At this time of the year, as through all the summer, the bears are busy looking for food. Black bears consume enormous quantities of food every day. This would help them in building several layers of fat, which the bears will use during the extended period of sleep in the winters. Bears normally have a very bad sense of sight and hearing, but they have a very strong sense of smell. Although essentially nocturnal, the black bears of Dashigam are relatively active during the daytime, a phenomenon which is typical to this place. On one hand, the forests of Kashmir are relatively quiet, but on the other, they are also a hub of a unique activity. A group of jackals is out on its daily walk. They are looking for food. No other place on this earth can speak of such vivid diversity of colors. And these colors definitely attract more colors. This butterfly, aptly named the leopard, is busy collecting nectar. And if one tries, we have to tread very cautiously in the thick cover of grass, as it doesn't hold just the butterflies. In these forests, at least two species of poison snakes, like the viper, are found. But all this activity doesn't seem to bother this group of langurs, who are busy grooming each other. Langur is the major primate 
which lives in the forests of Kashmir. These primates are easily alarmed and they serve as watchmen to all other animals of the forest. The valley of Kashmir is perhaps best known for its wetlands. A lone kingfisher trying to size up its meal is but a common sight in our backyards. The bird species are fairly well represented. While many of them are resident, many others like the whiskered terns migrate every summer to our lakes and wetlands with a single-minded approach to breed and reproduce. The whisker terns are strong flyers. The tern chicks grow fast on their essentially protein diet. And within a period of two weeks, they are ready to test their wings and fly back to the plains. As the winter arrives, the wetlands like Hawkersar and Shalabug become a scene of a different spectacle. Every fall, thousands of migratory birds arrive from various parts of Central Asia. In the Shalabug wetland, the grey leg geese with their typical sounds and flight formations are an interesting sight to watch. But so are the large groups of teals and pintails. Amongst the various species that overwinter in the Kashmir wetlands, the mallard even breeds here in fairly large numbers. The domestic tuck is thought to have evolved from the mallards. Apart from the mallard, the coots also breed in our wetlands in fairly large numbers. While coots are a fairly common sight, in the last few years, Birds such as the grey lag have become slightly rare and restricted. On the other side of Pir Panchal, Jammu has a typical cover of tropical forests. The Shivaliks, which form a major part of Jammu, have very different wildlife. Monkeys, of course, are the omnipresent symbol of the Jammu region and can be found almost anywhere. But one species which is unique to the Jasrota Wildlife Sanctuary is the spotted deer or cheetah. Spotted deer is very common in the plains of the subcontinent. But in Jammu region, not more than 80 individuals survive on the foothills of the Himalayas in Jasrota. Chital has been a part of our folklore. The thick underbrush in the Jasrota Wildlife Sanctuary is an ideal spot for them. These forests provide the Chital with a variety of diet and protection as well. Spotted deer, like all other herbivores, are very shy animals and even the slightest disturbance can set in a mad scamper. The forests of Jammu are also home to a very large antelope. The blue bull or nilgai is the largest antelope in the Indian subcontinent. The female nilgai are relatively lighter coloured while the males have a dark greyish colour which almost gives it a bluish look, thus earning it the name Nilgai. Nilgai normally live in open grasslands but have adapted well to the thick forests in the Shivaliks. And these forests have other species as well. 
like this porcupine, which has left its daytime resting place in search of food. Jammu and Kashmir is a state which has a unique and rich biodiversity. But with each passing day, the sounds that were so commonly heard have become very rare. The choice now is entirely ours. Do we still want to hear these sounds?